Hey guys, today we're going to be making a oscillator or an oscillator using the NE555 timer by Texas Instruments. Um, I got this schematic from circuitstoday.com as you can see here and they're calling it the CW Practice Oscillator. Although there are other things you could use it for, I'm going to be using it uh, to drive a little speaker so that I can practice Morse code without having to go on the air or uh, use the internet or anything like that. Um, this is not the schematic that I... Well, this is the schematic that I'm basing it off of, but you'll see here in a minute, this is not the schematic that I wound up using. But this is a good starting place, so we'll start with this. Um, first of all, it's driven by a 9 volt battery. Um, you can also use uh, a wall jack if you have like a, or a wall outlet, I mean to say, if you have a barrel jack or some other way of getting 9 volts um, or 12 volts to the circuit. Um, the 555, I think, is rated up to 15 volts. I think it's between 5 and 15, but check the data sheet. Don't take my word for it. Check the data sheet. Uh, 9 or 12 will work, though. Um, anyway, off of the positive rail here, we have VCC, which is pin 8, and then pin 4, which is the reset. We're tying the reset high. Um, I should mention, if you don't know how the 555 timer works, there will be links in the description to videos that can do a lot better job than I can at explaining how the 555 timer works. Um, itself. But for your information, this is going to be um, the 555 timer we're going to be operating in a stable mode to create a square wave to drive the speaker. So that's what we're doing here. But check the description, check the links out if you are interested in learning more about it. Um, anyway, after pin 4 here, it goes to uh, R1, in this case, 22,000 ohm resistor, and then to pin 7, which is the discharge. This is how the uh, how it discharges the circuit um, in between uh, phases. Uh, it goes through uh, R2, which is in our case a potentiometer. This one controls the frequency, and how it does that is by changing uh, essentially how much, how fast this capacitor here um, brings voltage back into the 555 timer. Um, and it does that through pins 2 and 6, which we tie together. That's the trigger and the threshold, respectively. Uh, pin 1 goes straight to ground, and pin 3 is our output, but before we talk about the output, I'll just mention uh, the astute observer may have noticed that there is no pin 5 being used. Um, pin 5 is just not used in this circuit. I think you can tie it to ground without problems, um, but you can also just do what I'm doing and leave it entirely alone. In our, ex in our situation, it'll just be floating. It'll, it won't be attached to anything. So if you're wondering about pin 5, that's what's up. So pin 3, like I say, is the output. This is going to oscillate high and off, high and low. And the first thing we want to do is pass it through a capacitor. In our case, it's an electrolytic capacitor, which is going to make the voltage positive and negative, which is what you need to actually operate the speaker. Then it's going to go through another potentiometer. Um, the schematic here shows 10K. Um, I wound up using 5K in my version, but we'll see that. Um, and this controls the volume. This uh, limits the current to the uh, to the speaker um, to control the amplitude of the square wave and limit the volume. Then it goes through the key, which is the actual telegraph key that we're going to be using, and then to ground. So this is this, this is a circuit that I based the design off of, and I didn't change too much, but I did mess with some of these values. Uh, these values didn't work great for me. Um, I guess your mileage may vary, but I took that and changed it up a little bit and we have this circuit which is not particularly well drawn I'll admit let me zoom in a little bit here it's not particularly well drawn but um, you'll see it, it works a little better and has a couple extra features um, same thing it's powered VCC goes to pin 7 just like before we also have VCC powering uh, pin 8 and pin 4 um, again just like before However, we have a 20 kilo ohm resistor here before the frequency knob. And the reason I did that is because when I just uh, had the 50,000 ohm potentiometer here, when you short it, when, you're, when it's at its lowest frequency, the, the frequency of the, the, the sound frequency, the pitch, was just way too high. And I just <laughs> thought it was really annoying. It's already pretty high as it is. But this 20 kilo ohm here was kind of a floor for um, how high the frequency can actually get. So you can switch this out with a, um, a greater value resistor if you want the maximum pitch to be lower, 
or you can remove it all together if you don't mind having a very high maximum pitch. But then as before, it goes through, uh, in our case, a 22 picofarad capacitor, because that's just what I had, and then two pins six and two as before. So all of that is really the same except for this, this, um, this resistor here. Um, in terms of the values, like I say, I had a 22 picofarad. I think the other one showed a uh, 20 picofarad. I just didn't have one. And I'm using a 20 kilo ohm resistor here as opposed to a 22 kilo ohm. So I'll just change the values very slightly, but they're not critical. Pin 3 again is the output, and which comes over here. As before, I'm using a 22 microfarad capacitor as opposed to the, what is it, 25 microfarad capacitor, which is what I had. And then I have another resistor here that the other schematic didn't have. And the reason I'm doing this is for a very similar reason that I did over here. This resistor limits uh, when the 5,000 kilo ohm potentiometer here is completely shorted. Um, the pitch, it, it gets really aggressively loud. <laughs> so this uh, 47 ohm resistor just kind of limits that a little bit and provides a little bit of a floor of resistance so that even when this is completely off, you still have 47 ohms of resistance. Um, We'll talk more about this later in the video. Um, somebody who knows more about electricity than I do can, can help me with this, but that's, that's why this is there. And then I have this going from um, through an LED as an indicator light, and then to the speaker, and then to key, and the key goes here to ground as before. I probably didn't need to separate this panel out, but I did. So with the schematic out of the way, you should be able to follow that pretty easily, I think, and see how it actually works. Um, I'll show you first the version that I did. Let me zoom in even further here. There we go. This is the first thing that I did, I did on a, kind of a perf, well, I, I prototyped it on a breadboard, but then I put it on this board, and this is the first time I've ever used one of these through-hole prototyping boards like this. This is a four by six centimeter board, and you can see I made a complete hot mess of it. <laughs> it's just kind of a disaster. And this one actually doesn't work because I think I, I shorted some things out and or damaged the IC. Um, so there's lessons to be learned here, but before I tell you those lessons, I'll go over and show you the second version I did, which is considerably neater, but still has its own problems. Um, I This is when I included the, the LED first off, um, but I have all these wires coming out of it, so that way I could hook the off-board components to it, the power and the key and the uh, speaker. Um, but uh, I have a better way of doing this in version 3 that I'm going to show you here in a second. Uh, here is the chip, but unfortunately I've spent too much time soldering up some of these pins, and I think I overloaded, I, I went higher than the heat tolerance of the chip, and I burned out some of the pins. So this one doesn't work either. Um, now the lesson learned here is that, and I knew this was the case, but you should really be using a socket for these kind of things. And the reason is because a socket, um, you're not going to damage it if you mess up the soldering. Um, so you put a socket in here, you solder that up, and then once it's done, then you put the chip in. And so the chip never got, never dealt with any solder at all. And, um, I, you know, I knew that. But I didn't take the advice that I knew was good advice, and as a result, I think I blew another 555 timer chip. Luckily, these are relatively cheap. Um, so, version 3 is the one that actually works, and it's this one here. Um, again, a little bit neater with the wires, but primarily we have the socket here. I can remove this, uh, the 555 timer here, and and, and put in a new one if this one ever breaks or something like that. Also, I bought some headers to put in here so that way I don't have to have wires or anything tied directly to the board. Um, I can plug in things, uh, my offboard components, I can plug in uh, to these nice little headers. I don't have them sanded or anything because this is still kind of a prototype, but that's that. Same thing with the LED. I have it stuck in now, but the LED can just pop out if you choose to. So this is the circuit. This is all it takes. Like I say, it's three resistors, two potentiometers, an LED, which is optional, the 555 timer, and two capacitors. So it, it's really not a lot of components. It's really cheap um, to build, I guess provided you have all this stuff. If you didn't have all this stuff, um, shipping would probably eat you up more than anything. But um, I think I did a better job soldering. Is it in focus? It's kind of in focus. Let me fix that real quick. There we go. 
a little bit of better job soldering this time than I did last time. I'm not too really proud of it, but I'm not ashamed either, so I'll show it off to you. Um, okay, so let me plug in the components. Well, let me show you the components, the offboard stuff, and then I'll actually show it, show you it working. So the first thing is the actual key that I'm going to be using is this. Let me zoom back. This is the key that I'm going to be using. This is my telegraph key. Um, I have two of these. I got them off of eBay. I think for a grand total of fifteen dollars. So this comes out to you know seven or eight bucks. Um, don't hold me to that though, because I, I I don't know if that was a good deal or not. But it's a very 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 cheap key, um, and it's the only key that I own. <laughs> anyway, these two terminals here are what's going to go into the schematic. The speaker itself I got is this cheapo depot piece right here. Uh, this is an 8 ohm speaker I got off of Amazon. I will not be buying one of these again because I hate these leads. They're tiny and they're hard to use. And I finally got it soldered to a piece of thicker wire and put some electrical tape on it, but I'm really unhappy with this speaker. Um, but, you know, use what you have, I suppose. And then I'm powering it with a 9-volt battery, like I mentioned, and a battery snap. There we go. And I just tied that to a couple of wires um, and again soldered them um, and put some electrical tape on here too. So let me zoom out a little bit further again and plug all this together. So negative goes in this slot here, positive goes on this side. The speaker comes here. The polarity of the speaker is not important. Sometimes, there we go, sometimes it gets a little stuck going in, but there we go, speaker's in. And the key also, again, there is no polarity to the key as well. I do have them red and black wires, but that's, I don't know, just because I did that. It's actually not important because all it does is complete the circuit. So there we go, let me make sure I put this there. There we go, so now you can see everything. And that's all it is, it's pretty simple. You can hear it. Um, this is the volume knob. It's all rotated all the way down. You probably can't hear it. But you probably can see the LED. Let me see if I can. There you go. Kind of in the shadow there, you can see the LED coming on. And as I increase the volume. Now, I remember earlier, if you remember the schematic from earlier, R3 is at 47 ohm resistor and the reason I have that is because you can hear this jump at the very high the highest part of the the volume here that, that jump there is caused because this potentiometer is being completely shorted and so without any resistance there's a kind of a, a, a rush of current and that 47 ohm resistor helps with that I think higher um, higher resistances there would help even more but 47, I think, is what I consider tolerable for this. So there is a bit of a shelf there, but uh, I think it's tolerable. This um, knob over here is the frequency. That's so very high pitched. And again, this would, would go even higher if I um, if I didn't have that other resistor. Um, R2 in our schematic, so, um, or whatever it was you saw. Here, let me bring this into frame. I'll just demonstrate. In this particular configuration with these particular components, uh, it goes up to a pitch of 2240 hertz. And a, ma a minimum pitch of... Eight forty-eight. So if I want like an A, oh, it actually uh, hold on. There you go for your musicians out there. It's eight eighty A, an octave above concert four forty. So pr I'm pretty happy with it overall. Uh, pretty simple to make. Um, now this is cumbersome. <laughs> 
to to carry around and to you know to, to put together and stuff like that so in the next video I will be making a second video where um, I will be putting this inside of a uh, an enclosure um, I ordered I drew the schematic up on easy EDA and ordered a professionally made PCB from JLC PCB so next time in that video when I make the enclosure you'll see that this is actually going to be on a a professionally printed circuit board and so that'll be kind of cool um, also the the footprint of that's a little bit smaller as well so in the next video if you're interested I'll be making an enclosure for this and we'll make it one complete unit but hopefully you enjoyed this you see how the timer works and everything if I didn't explain explain anything um, clearly clear enough uh, please do let me know and uh, I'll, I'll be around in the comments and I'll answer any questions uh, at least to the best of my ability. But hopefully this helps somebody out. It's a lot of fun to make the little project. And like I say, you can do a little bit of a practice CW with it. So, um, a lot of fun. Hopefully you have a good day, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. <laughs> have a good day, and hopefully you enjoyed this. <laughs> Cheers.